Hello everyone. Uh, I know it's been a long time since I've been you know, making videos, but uh, I have retired and uh, been working on a lot of other things. I just had a show, which you may have seen in the uh, last video that I put up, uh, denoting uh, my entering a new decade. Anyway, for the show, I needed to make a new sort of uh, guest book for people to sign. So I made this thing, which was all in like one sitting. Uh, it's a cloth-bound book, multiple signatures. There's end papers, which is a made end paper, and then on the inside I put another part of the postcard that has the uh, information for the reception. Uh, and then, of course, there's a lot of pages for people to write in. So uh, I have to make another one of these books because my partner has a show coming up uh, next month. So I thought I would bring you along and show you, you know, what I'm doing. Uh, we started out with uh, folded papers like this. This is all Mohawk Superfine, and they're folded in half. And for the book, I'm going to make three signatures. So I'll take four of these sheets and make, make a signature, knock it up, and then do, do that two more times so that I have three signatures to sew together. So I'll put these away now, and I'm going to trim these down uh, because I don't want to have this full size uh, for the book. Uh, and since they're going to be, uh, it's not going to be guillotined around the edges, I have to like you know, clean them, do each signature individually and try to keep the edges as clean as possible. Because I have inserted the pages, you'll see that the they all sort of like rise out, you know, of this. So I'm going to trim the foredge as well by just about a, a quarter inch or so. I'd like to make the books about the same size. This is going to be just a little bigger, but uh, I'll make a little mark on that and then set the gauge. Each time I cut, I'm going to knock it into the spine so that everything is nice and tight. Okay, so now we're ready to, uh, to sew it together. I'm going to bring the camera a little closer here. There. And get a place to sit down. I have a triangle, a needle, and some tapes. I am going to sew these on tapes because that'll keep these, you know, together. So I'll cut two tapes. Like that. And my thread is here. So I'll pull off a piece of thread. It is a little more than three, two, three, about three and a half lengths to use. And I usually put the needle on the piece of thread or the end of the thread that comes off of the spool last. 
So I'm going to flatten this little edge here. Oh, wait a minute. First, I'm going to thread it. There. Then I'm going to flatten a little piece of this. And stick the needle through so that I can pull this you know, like that. And then that pulls this down and keeps the thread on the needle. Okay. So I'm going to mark the kettles at about over here. I'm going to mark the kettles at about uh, three quarters of an inch from the end on each end here. And then the tapes, I'm just going to center in the space visually. So here and here. And then with the triangle, I'll just mark these up on the spines, all three signatures. Like that. And we can begin to sew. So I'll take all the signatures over. Open this up in the center here. Find the needle hole here, making sure I've knocked everything to head and tail. Going out of the kettle. Uh, we're going to go into the kettle once I've figured out where the hole is. So. And we come out of the signature. Make a loop for the tape. I'm going to make a hole from the inside. I'll do that on both of these things here. Once you have the first signature, you'll know where everything is because the tapes will be in place. So, so now we have a hole here. Pull your threads parallel to the spine. And then go out the kettle. Okay, now I'll put the tapes in. Pull that tight. Bring this tape here. And so that up. Now I'll take the next signature, knock this up to head and tail, find the center of the signature, and start all over again here. I'm going to poke from the inside first because I know where the, uh, the hole is, so I can see where the holes are. looking back and forth. It's like an animator's trick to see, you know, what the two sides look like at the same time. Okay. So I'm going to put this through the kettle stitch here. Bring this around. Okay. 
and then we'll tie a little square knot here. Okay, then I get the third signature and sew that into place. Okay, now when I get down to this end one, I'm going to do a, a double kettle here by putting the needle between the last two sewn signatures and pushing it out the head, and it makes a loop. Then you bring the needle up through the loop like this, and that will secure it in place. For the double, I'll put it between these last two signatures that were tied, you know, from the inside of the book out the head, and then again up through the loop and that will secure the book. And I'll trim that off and knock this up to the spine. And we have a pretty neat book. I'm going to pull the tapes even here. And then we'll work on the, the end papers. So now we're ready to make the end papers. Uh, I'm going to push a chair away here. And we've chosen this paper for our end papers. It's a nice, you know, handmade paper. I'm just testing here to make sure that if I cut this in half, we will have enough. Okay. So what I'm going to do is fold these in half with the, there's a laid side, so I'm going to put that on the inside. And I have a sharp edge here which will be our head. This is a laid side here. Match the corners. And you notice I'm using my fingernail instead of a folder. That's okay. <laughs> so, now, the book is this size. And I want to trim these end papers down, but I don't want to trim them actually to size. So I'm going to take these, I put the book on, and I'm going to give it probably a half inch in both length and width. And I'll cut both of these. Okay, the end papers are there, and while this is uh, a little different and it's a very fast, you know, put together book, I'm going to put these together as a made end paper with PVA. So I have my roller, you know, set up over here, and I'm going to roll this out so that the roller is fairly dry. And I think I will get a folder out because I will need that. So I have the folder here. There. Okay. There. Okay. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm putting the tapes and the string, the uh, threads, out of the way because we'll line the spine after we put the end papers on. And I've rolled the glue 
so that the roller is fairly dry. And I'm going to roll the whole sheet out. And I want to do this fairly quickly because I don't want the paper to expand too much. Then I'll take the end paper and put this right to the head and make sure that I match the whole top of the book, you know, right here. And rub this down. And at this point we can bring the tapes over and the threads over if necessary. Now, you could do this uh, trimming now, but I'm not going to do it now because I want to put a, a cloth cover on it and I want to trim the end papers and the cover at the same time. So, I'm going to glue this one out just like I did the other side and attach the end paper here. to have good light. Now the head is on this side this time, so I'm going to line the head up here because I want the head uh, to be the same on both of these and it'll make it easier to trim these things later. Okay. Okay, so now we have a made end paper. And the made end paper, of course, is, you know, the end paper is joined to the white of the text. So I'm going I'm to knock up the spine now and pull the tapes nice and tight. And we're going to line the spine. So I've got this nice and tight here. This ribbon is not quite flat, but there it goes. Take a little bit of glue and just roll up the spine like this. Let that sit for just a second while I get some, some mull. Because I want a little bit of uh, fabric on here. I'm going to take this, mark it, and cut about a two inch piece. press this together, make sure all of these are in contact, take the roller again and roll off the edges here, put the mull on, this gives you a little bit of strength in the book and it will help keep it closed. I'm going to put a little paper on here as well for a lining. This helps keep the book closed, you know, when it is, you know, resting, you know, on a shelf. Put this here, rub like that. Okay. The advantage of using a roller, you see, is like you put on just the right amount of glue and you're not going to get excess, you know, that squeezes out everywhere else. So let me get some lining paper. Okay, the grain's running the right way. I'm going to trim this down. Oops, I'm going to trim it to the book actually. Let's see. So there. Okay. And it's also at this point that you put the ribbon on. So I'm going to take the ribbon, like this, and put a little glue just on the end, like that, and attach this to the head. 
This is a little wider than the book, so it's going to wrap around a little bit here. And then let this rest up here so it's out of the way. Test my paper's length here. That looks pretty good. So. Now we'll put a little more glue on the spine, and that fills in all the cracks, like that. And this will seal the ribbon into the spine of the book. Put the end paper, put the, uh, put the uh, lining paper right on the book, matching at the head, and wrap this down. And I'll have to let this sit for a minute just until it dries. develop some sort of tack here. Give that a little crease like that. Let this wait just a minute <laughs> until it gets a little harder. And then we should be able to fold it back on itself. And this will give us the second layer. Okay. And with the roller touch, a little tip of glue there. Bring the paper around and rub this tight. I'll also give this a little bit of a crease like that. And I have to let this one dry a little bit longer. So while we're letting that dry, I'll get the covering material into, uh, into a, a smaller size that's more manageable. So I know I'm going to need a piece about like this. So I'll wrap it around, get a little snip, so I'll cut it. And for this one too, I want to, uh, I'm going to be lining it up to the head, to the head of the book. And, uh, so I don't need to have all of this excess on here. So I'm going to take this and I'll cut it so it's just uh, about the same size as the, uh, as the end paper. Uh, that's the side. And I can work on the, uh, the covered decorations and the inside. Now this card is going to be, because it's a landscape, as a landscape, it's too wide for the front of the book as it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two cards and the first thing I'm going to do is take this one and this is a piece of twin tack so I don't have to use wet glue to put this onto the material. Uh, this material is SkyVertex, and SkyVertex uh, tends to resist the glue. It, it's all right for like putting these things down, but I think I would rather put on a dry adhesive uh, for the, the cover of that. Uh, this, is, this particular card is going to go on the inside because there's a slight flaw on this side. So I've taken the card and I'm going to put the twin tack on the picture side lining it up to the head and then rubbing it down and now that's ready to play with uh, and on this one I'm going to put the twin tack onto the uh, print side or the text side 
because this is what's actually going to be on the cover. So I'm going to line this up right to the edges. Like that. Now, since the uh, the book is not going to be very wide, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the image out and the title out, and I'm going to put the image on top and the uh, title below. So I'm going to take my dividers right here. I have these little uh, drafting dividers. And I'm going to mark an even border from the corner here, like this, at the head, and the sides. Two marks for each edge, so I know where to cut these pieces. Okay, then with my straight edge and my Ulfa knife, I'll set the point into one of those little indentation marks, bring it into the other one and then just cut this right in half. This will be the first cut. That way I have a clean uh, piece for the title and it's going to be cut at a different different length. And you can see here the little uh, divider marks. So you can see where I have to cut. So put this into one point here. Turn this around, just work my way around the picture. All of this is rubbish. Now for this one, I'm going to make, I want to keep it sort of close to size. Touch the edges there and see what that looks like. I'm going to open up the dividers here. So I have a decent space. I'm going to match, you know, the outside edge here. Oh, that's a short side there. And it doesn't look all that straight. Let's see, I think my dividers may have, I may have slipped with the ruler a little bit. So I'm going to trim this, because that's a little out of square. I may have to get another card. But I'll worry about that in a few minutes. And on this one, since this is going inside, I'll take the dividers and mark, you know, from the text here an even bit on both sides. Actually, maybe I should do it from here. Nope, I want to do it from, from here, like that. And then I'll take my triangle. and just test that to see where it's going. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to put that on the edge of the table like this. And with the catch, I can slide this in place and keep this square. So I can just cut this. Straight through. And 
take off the edge here. It didn't cut as clean as I wanted. And then here I'll just cut off the bottom underneath the copyright. Okay, now in order to give this a little bit of a frame, I'm going to take a little bit of our uh, cover material and give this a little border of maroon, you know, like the cover. So I'll just set this in here and then I'll use the dividers to cut it again. Taking the twin tack off, I'll set this here so it has a generous border. Then I'll use my dividers again to give it a little frame. So I'll do here for the hole. And I'm going to put this in the center too. I hope I can find it again. This is a rather textured piece of paper. Let me cut this first one here. Test my square edge. That's pretty good. So, set that over. That's where the hole is. Always losing the knife underneath the uh, papers here. Like that. And set the straight edge on here. And continue the cut. And I'll do the same thing. I'm going to work it away this way. Cut that off first. Let me just cut this off here. So I know that this edge is square. Like that. Take the dividers, mark it here in the center. That's where the hole is. Oops. That's pretty square there. Okay. I didn't have the square set straight on that last cut, so I have to give the bottom another trim here. So now we have like a little frame, a little frame for the, uh, for the piece that's going to go inside the book. I'll, put, have to, I'll have to put another piece of twin tech on the back of that, and I'll do that in just a little bit. But I think we're ready now to put the cover on. So I'll get the trash off the desk here. We have our uh, lining paper. off and then I'm going to just take the paper and tear it a little closer. There. And wrap that around. So now we have a lined spine on our on our book with the uh, the, the made end paper inside here. And we'll be able to do our trimming after we put the cover on. So, in order to put the cover on, 
we're going to do a very same similar thing to what we did with the the end papers. I'm going to glue out this this end here. Then I'm going to put the uh, the cover material on like this. I'll fold it around, and then we glue the spine, glue that down, and then do the the other side of the book. So, first thing, lift up the tapes here, get the ribbon out of the way. I should probably cut that shorter, like that. Okay. And then again, I'm going to set the roller up here so that it's fairly dry. Just, you only need a little bit of glue, you know, for this. And you can, you can see where the book is. You want to be careful about that. You always want to roll off the edges. You don't want to put the glue inside the book. <laughs> Okay, you see the paper is curling because it's expanding. I'm going to put the tapes down and do a final roll over the, the mall. Then I'll take the cover material. Let's get this corner again a little better. Take the cover material and line it right up to the head. Like this, and then rub it down. And so you could do this with paper, you could do this with, you know, uh, another kind of fabric, anything that's like really heavy. We're just using the Skyvertex because that's what uh, Coleman wanted on his, on his uh, guest book, you know, for this show. So now, I'm going to take this, do a little bit of folding over with the folder to make it nice and tight. Run this back, and I'm just going to glue up the spine like that because I only want to do one side at a time while we're going around here to keep everything flush and tight. Okay, now I'm going to pull this. See, I'm pulling with this finger here while I'm pushing down here to make this a nice tight spine. Now I'll fold this back. Lift up the tapes, take my newly charged sort of dry roller again, roll along and off the book like this. And you can see where the glue is on this colored paper. And get the the mull down like that. Get that end again. Then we bring this around, and I'm going to lift the end paper up like that, so that I can get my fingers underneath and try to bring this right up to the the line here. It looks like the paper has expanded a little bit there, so we'll do a little bit of trimming on the head as well. But now we're all tight here. And we're close to being finished. I have a little bit of glue here. Just wipe that off. It dries very fast. Okay, so now we have our book, pretty much. It's just a matter of trimming out these uh, forages here to match the insides of the text of the text side. So we do that by laying this down and putting a ruler right onto both the, you know, right at the edge of the text, you know, where the made end paper is. And we cut. Same thing here. Of 
the room slipped a little bit, but I'll fix that. So. And now we do the trimming on the inside here. And we get a brick here just to hold this vertical. It's driven out of the way. it goes pretty much to the back to the spine because we'll cut the spine with scissors. I'll turn this this way. This way is always a little bit more difficult because you're cutting towards your body on the back side you know, of the book. Could actually cut from the like that. I'm dragging the Olfa knife away from me. And then we have these ends here like this. And we take the scissors and drop it off. And now we have a fairly neatly, fairly neatly. Oh. I bent this back like here, and I wasn't even on screen. But I bent this back, and then took the scissors and clipped, you know, like that. So here we have the book. And it's virtually ready to have the, uh, the cover mounted on it. Sometimes the way the typography is laid out on the postcard uh, doesn't leave quite enough space around to actually just cut it in half. So I got another card, and I cut this one, uh, you know, right on the edge here, which gave me another sixteenth of an inch of blue, you know, for this. So now I'll just trim the bottom, and I'll set the dividers uh, that sort of matches the space here, and I'll do that underneath here, so that I can put. Uh, some space on here and get rid of the stuff that is just been centered on the card. Making sure this is all square. Now I'll cut like that. And then this is sort of how it's going to go on the cover, you know, like this, two separate pieces. And what I think I'm going to do is take a piece of masking tape which is uh, just about three quarters of an inch, and I'm going to set it right at the head, like that. That way I have like a guide for keeping it straight. And then I'll measure this to find the center, which looks like it's about seven and a half uh, centimeters. That's 15, oh, so it's 16, so it's almost, it's eight. So it's like fully 15, yeah, it's fully 15, so that's going to be seven and a half, like that. And then I'll visually center you know, this piece here, and I'll be able to get it on straight because I have the tape as a guide. I think I want to trim this one down just a little bit more. I'm going to give this not quite so much space at the head. Yeah, that should come down. So let's bring this down. Uh, 
Okay, so now we have, you know, the two squares and they're virtually the same length here. So all I have to do is line them up and keep that space parallel in between. I'm rolling the cut edges down with the folder. Tack and line these up to match the edges here. And there we are. And here we have the almost finished book. I'm going to put that thing inside now, too. And I'm going to use just the ruler by itself as a guide because this is pretty wide here. Sit that in. Put a weight on it. Oh, I have to put some twin tack on this. Uh, so I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> Oops. Take this and trim these off now. There, okay. Get the sticky bits off. Put the roller back in place here. And peel off the twin tack. Protective paper here. And there we have the announcement of the reception mounted inside the, inside the book. So, we're just about done. I'm going to take a little bit of glue here and seal the edge of the ribbon. And we're all finished. Now that we've finished making a book in just about a half an hour, uh, I'd like to bring something else up that's been on my mind. Uh, there are a lot of you know fine teachers on YouTube, and I'm thinking you know for myself and for them, uh, it would be really nice if uh, we started something called Tip the Tutor.
after all, you know, you tip waiters, you tip, you know, baristas, you tip, you know, a lot of other people. And when uh, teachers give you uh, new information or save you time or money, it would be nice to, you know, send them, a, just send them a dollar or two. Uh, and uh, we all, I think, I, I think we all have, you know, PayPal accounts, that kind of thing, and it's very easy, you know, to send something. This is uh, my address here, and uh, send me a dollar if this has been helpful, uh, or if you like my videos. It would be really nice. Uh, I do answer all of your questions and try to uh, you know, help you out when you have problems you know, with various projects on your own. I'm you know, very amenable and very accessible. Anyway, uh, try it again. This is uh, Colesage, C-O-L-S-A-G-E, at earthlink.net. And just send me a dollar. That's fine. It'd be really nice to hear from you.